everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, your host, and also known as the Private Money Authority. And if you're brand new to the show, I want to give you a special welcome here on Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. We talk about all things real estate. We talk about single family houses, commercial. We talk about how to find the deals before other real estate investors know about them, how to beat them to the punch, how to get your deals funded without relying on any banks or mortgage companies or hard money lenders. And what I'm talking about there is private money. Also, we talk about selling properties quickly, how we sell our houses in three days or less, how to automate the business. And if you have been tuning in since we launched the show over a year ago, you know that I have been having just amazing, incredible guests and experts here on the show. And today is no exception. Today, we're going to be talking about how to automate your business through virtual assistance. But before I introduce my very, very special guest and dear friend, I've got a free gift and an invitation for everybody that's tuning in. Now, if you are listening to iTunes, be sure to rate, subscribe, and review. We love your feedback and your comments. Give me five stars, please. And if you're watching on one of the YouTube channels, uh, be sure and subscribe so you don't miss out on the content. And submit your questions in the comment section. We'll get all of your real estate investing questions answered. So the free gift and class that I've got for you, I've got a on-demand master class waiting for you to attend right here on the internet. It's called Where to Get the Money Now, and I will reveal and pull the curtain back as to how you can get unlimited funding for your deals in five easy steps without relying on banks, mortgage companies, and hard money lenders. So you can check out that online masterclass at www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. That website again is jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. So with that, I am so excited to have as my guest, my expert guest, and also my dear friend here on the show with me, Mr. Robert Nickel. But before I bring him on and let him loose, I got to tell you just a little bit about Rob. Well, I've known Rob personally myself now for, I guess it's over two years, maybe a little bit longer than that since Rob and I came into the same world. He and I are in a, a very high-end mastermind group together. But Rob has helped me transform my own business into automating my business even more so with his magic of virtual assistance. So Rob is the founder of a company, worldwide company called Rocket Station. He's got hundreds of virtual assistants that can take care of and perform any real estate investing task that either you can think of or not think of, because I can tell you, since I started using Rob's company and his virtual assistants, they brought to the table to me ways that I can use a virtual assistant that I never even thought of. I mean, he has just, he and his company have simplified my life. Well, Rob has had, he's perfected a series of systems and processes that literally has launched him to the forefront of the real estate investing industry. With that, no doubt, uh, he's recognized that countless, and he knows that investors, real estate investors and entrepreneurs can literally benefit from his workflows, from his proven systems. And as I said, I experience it myself. And he started Rocket Station, as I mentioned. So he continues to push Rocket Station with his innovating thinking. He's definitely a visionary and his extensive experience. Rocket Station's mission, as Rob has laid it out, is to enhance real estate investors' lives through better business. And we're proud, and he's proud, to serve as client partners all across the globe. Rob, I'm just so excited to have you here on the show. Welcome, my friend. Thanks, Jay. I really appreciate you having me. I'm very, very thankful for your time and thankful to be here. And I'm getting to know you a couple of years ago, I didn't take long to realize that our friendship would become what it is. You're such a special guy. And uh, seeing you at the at the piano that first night <laughs> that we met was like, 
holy cow. So yeah, I, it's uh, been a fun couple of years getting to know you. It started with the bang. You're, I've never really heard anybody live on a piano like you. So that was a pretty awesome start. It was, it's fun that, to get to work with you now. And I appreciate you having me on. So th thanks for your time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's dive right on in, Rob. So my first question, Rob, is, is how did this brainchild of yours of Rocket Station even come about? I mean, where, where did the seed get planted? I mean, you know, were you real estate investor yourself? And you're like, woke up one day and you said, you know, this business is running me and I got to get it automated. I mean, where did this Rocket Station virtual assistant thing come from? Yeah, I grew up in my summers working for a general contractor. And I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad at a pretty young age. So I was lucky to kind of have that exposure. And so pretty quick out of college, I jumped into real estate full time. It was, I started as an agent and was rehabbing because I, I rehabbing was what I knew. That was my, my background. So I'd rehab one project at a time and, and then work mostly as a buyer's agent on the side. And as soon as I could stop being an agent because I had enough, you know, transactions going on the rehab I, I got out of that pretty quick because driving potential buyers around was not was not for me it, in other words you realized pretty quickly that as a realtor you're working for tips right oh it was yeah not not for me my very first person I didn't make them sign an agreement because I was an idiot and drove them around forever and ever and they bought a house around me and I didn't even get paid. So not even ah. tips, right? So it's like, that's <laughs> I learned pretty quick that being a broker was it for me. But it was a good intro into the space, learn contracts and forms and all those things, right? And, and so I was in real estate and I'd kind of hit a ceiling, Jay. I could do three or four transactions a month because I'd learned about wholesaling, which really was a huge new thing for me because managing contractors and that process was really tough. And the idea of just going from, hey, I can generate a lead, get a contract, close on that and not have to pay or not have to manage contractors and deal with all the, you know, the, for me, each rehab felt like a full-time job. So I'm not one of these guys that can do a hundred rehabs at one time, like we see in our masterminds and our group. That wasn't for me because I didn't have any systems. I didn't have any processes. I didn't have anything. It was just me kind of grinding through all day. I was answering the phone. I was running comps. I literally did everything, Jay, intent, every single thing. And so I was getting kind of worn out and I went and visited my broker who I was hanging my license with. And, and he started showing me virtual assistants and he was leveraging teams from the Philippines to circle prospect and run comps and put CMA packets together. And then once they had, you know, do all the listings and all the appointments and all the follow-up and literally every single thing. And I'm sitting here watching it. And I was like, that's the exact same thing as what I do in my investing business. I just do it for myself instead of representing someone else, which the agents did, right? And so he showed me VAs and that was kind of the, the impetus for, for all of it. So I, I that concept of, hey, I can get more done. I can have somebody answer the phone and do that. And so that was great. So I went home, Jay, and I was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. And it was horrible. Because I was trying to do it on my own. I was out trying to like hire and post resumes and screen and then run, like, what do you do? You run background checks? Are you doing drug screening? Are you like, I didn't know how to do any of that stuff. So I was looking for an easy button. I was looking for done for you and it didn't really exist. So over time, we just kind of created it by just helping other investors in 2013 we had done it almost a hundred something times with our friends and people that we knew just because. You mean and just we, you mean just helping them out? Yeah, well, because you know, like when you hire somebody, what do you need? You need scripts, you need systems, you need processes, you need all the stuff that most of us don't have, right? Even really good operators don't necessarily have scopes written out for every step of the process. And how did you know when you're answering the phone, you need a script? And then you've got to qualify that lead. So then it's like, well, what status do you put them? And then what do you do with them if it's follow-up? And how often do you call them? And literally all the day-to-day -day stuff, you have, like somebody's got to tell them what to do. And so that, like for me, waking up in the morning and driving to work started off awful because all I'd had to do was think, like all my entire world seemed like I was thinking of what, telling what other people what to do to figure it out. And finally, once I had systems and processes in place, structure 
then team members could could become efficient, then team members could go crush their every day, crush their job. And as a result, two major things happened for me. I got some of my time back, which is really what it was all about, but I also became more efficient. We were able to do more transactions. And so we just started giving all those systems and processes and all those things, the experience that you went through to just give people what they need to be successful, that just became the process and then VA's plugging in was just, you know, that's a tool in the toolbox, but laying the groundwork and the foundation and going through that process that you really went through at the beginning, getting aligned, understanding your goals, understanding how you want to operate and then getting really structured and creating systems and processes and scopes around that. That to me is the only way to really like have efficiency in the teams and clear accountability and transparency and, and all the things that I think you're getting and excited about with, with your teams. Well, you know, and I got to go ahead and share and tell this story about my recent experience as in like 90 or 120 days ago. So, you know, I've been using your virtual assistants now for some time, but, and you may not even know about this, uh, Rob, because you've grown your company to be pretty big. But even though you got a big company, I got to tell you from personal experience, your people deliver stellar customer service. And so here's what happened. So I, I came up with this virtual assistant position that, and I, I'm not, it doesn't matter as to what I needed them to do. But anyway, I knew I needed a full time person and I knew I could save a lot of money by going through your company and getting a virtual assistant to, to help me. But here's the story I got to share. So I visited with one of your key people at Rocket Station and they interviewed me and we really narrowed in as to, you know, the task that this virtual assistant would be doing for me and my business. And here's what just blows my mind. I mean, you know, one of the most challenging and, and difficult and annoying <laughs> and you know activities that we do as entrepreneurs and growing our business is the interview process and locating people to hire and just going through all that logistics and minutia of finding people to interview interviewing them going through this hiring process well let me tell you something it blew me away so I spoke with one of your key people. They know what I'm looking for and listen to what they did as if you don't know what your people do, but listen what they did. We had a, a Zoom conference call scheduled, a video conference call. They had three candidates lined up for me to interview right on Zoom. And we had 10 to 15 minutes for each candidate that I interviewed. So so here we go. I, I, I click on the link. I'm in the Zoom conference room, you know, the supervisor. Actually, I think there were two supervisors that were conducted helping me or they were conducting the interview. So here comes candidate number one. Zoom pops up on the camera. They tell their story. You know, I ask them questions and we, I visit with them for 10 minutes or so. Zoom, here's candidate number two, do the same thing. Zoom, here's candidate number three. And at the end of that 45 minutes, which was my total time involved, other than spending the first 15 minutes describing what I needed somebody to help me with, here's the deal. All three of those candidates were like majorly qualified to do what I needed done. Very professional. I mean, they had their act together. They had their story together. And it was, I mean, I had a problem. It was sort of difficult for me to decide between those three, but I talked it through with the, you know, with the supervisor. Oh, even Christina, you know, who works with both you and me in the business. She was on the Zoom call with me. She gave me her feedback. Here's the bottom line. In less than one hour from the time I told your people what I was looking for, to going through the entire interview process, I had somebody hired that had already been vetted. And it was like, this is like the most pleasurable, you know, hiring process I've been through in my entire decades career of being an entrepreneur. And, you know, 
by the end of the third candidate, you know, I felt like, you know, I felt like I was one of the judges on America's, you know, American Idol or something, you know. And so anyway, we had them hired and done and they started that coming Monday and she's worked out fantastic. So I just can't say enough of great stuff about, I mean, the reason I thought of this story is you're talking about systems and processes. I mean, even through the hiring process, it was just beautiful stress-free and seamless. That's awesome. Well, we, we've spent a lot of years and a lot of work to try to create that, that process, but that's the exact idea, is that you're busy, you've got an idea of what you need done, you can't spend or you don't want to spend the amount of the energy and time and effort to get up and running. Our team is there to facilitate that for you and make that happen. And they're truly workforce management experts. And, and I'm proud that they created that experience for you. That's what our entire mission is designed to create that for you, Jay. So I'm very, very excited for you. I'm proud of that. And it's just, it's, this is what makes what I do fulfilling, right? Is people like you that I not only get to, to work with, we get to become really good friends because it's a mutually beneficial Thing, right where our company is servicing your company and providing value man what what's more fulfilling than that so really really fun to hear that story i appreciate it uh, it's really fun to hear sure so let's go ahead and dive in on virtual assistants so i mean i know what i use your virtual assistants for but you know my audience i've got a, i got a good share of my audience that are still working towards their very first real estate deal their real estate investing deal Another part of my audience, they've done a few deals. Another part of my audience, they're doing a bunch of deals. So, you know, let's talk about why a virtual assistant, why consider using a virtual assistant, and what are, you know, what are the, some of those most popular tasks that a virtual assistant can do for the real estate entrepreneur? Yeah, absolutely. What, what can a VA do for me is usually the number one question that people have, right? So, it's easier to think about it from a couple of standpoints. So when you think about the entire business, the real estate business from marketing and lead management and underwriting, running comps and all the analysis to, you know, your general admin and transaction coordination and title management. If you look at that entire process, there's two aspects of it that are super important from like a business building standpoint. One is it's a transactional business. Right. So it's like you go through all of that process every time for every deal and each time you do it over and over and over. So you close the deal, you got to do it all over again and you close the deal and you do it all over again. So it's that transactional business. But what's so amazing about 2019 and where we are today and is the technology availability, the advancement in technology. So between cloud storage and every CRM in every phone system, every, every resource that's used within your business is a cloud-based resource. And so having virtual team members is, is not only doable, it's now easy and simple. That's why you were able to have that experience. Those people, they're buzzing in on Zoom. Literally, they could not be further across, across the globe. You could pretty much draw a straight line through the center of the earth and hit them, right? So the, the technology advancements created that opportunity for through, through the connection there. And so what can a VA do throughout that entire transactional process? Anything done on a phone or computer. It's just really about how your business is structured. So for people that are brand new and who've never done a deal, it's all just about utilization and time. You've got to, you either have time or money and, or, you know, you've got to allocate something. So if you're by yourself, if you're going to do all the work, everything by yourself, then you're allocating all your time, right? So what is highest and best use of your time? If, if people like to, I'm assuming people like their kids and their families and like things other than just work. So they, that's what they really are in the business for is so they can do what they want, when they want, with who they want, right? So it's, you know, we all want to spend time with our friends and family and, and do things that we actually care about. That's really why we're in the business, right? So when you look at what you're doing every single day, Jay, like what is the best use of your time? 
And I would love to hear and say, you know, you should pick one thing to do every day, but that's not very realistic, right? We all got to kind of live our lives and figure it out and kind of hustle through the day to day. But when you think of the few things that you should actually be doing, for some people that's meeting with sellers, whether to get listing appointments or get the transaction. For some people that's, you know, networking to raise private money because their businesses needs to grow, their rehabbing business needs to grow for, from that. It's really just kind of depends on where you are, but it's about the highest and best use of your time. And if you could spend 10 bucks an hour to get rid of some of these tasks and get your time back and be able to do more transactions, it's, that's the formula. And it's not, it's not super complicated to make happen, right? As you've seen that that's what you're going through. So what can you delegate? What can you outsource? What you've seen, I think what you've been kind of blown away with is the things that pretty much anything throughout the business. The most important thing is, what are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish in your business? Where should you spend your time? And then you create efficiencies around everything else. So technology should help a lot. So anything you can apply technology to, we do that first. And then second, where we need a human body, whether that's answering the phones or running comps or building buyers lists, it totally depends. But it's, you know, so many people look at it at hiring somebody within the business as an expense. And if you want to do that, that's fine. There's a pretty easy formula for that. It's like, what is your revenue per deal? For me, I made ten to twelve thousand dollars per wholesale deal or about thirty-five to forty thousand in a rehab. So one more deal and a rehab or two deals in a wholesale paid for that person for the whole year. So if you want to look at like an expense, it's like one more deal a year. And then everything else they do is great, right? You just get your time back for that. So, that's, but I like to look at it as more of an investment. You're investing in your business to create the platform that you're really looking to build. You're looking to create something. You don't want just the, the golden egg. You want the goose that produces the egg all the time, right? And the way you do that is by having competent, structured, great team members performing good systems and tasks and processes over and over and over again, which is what you have, which is why you're successful, right? So working with you is easy because you come in, Jay, and you give our team what we need. We have that alignment call with you. You, you, you thought you had an idea of what you wanted your VAs to do, and the team said, great, but have you thought about this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this? And you said, no, I haven't. Let's, th let's think about how that would work in the communication correspondence and who would have to take what. And you, you were willing to go through that process with my team. They could pull that out of you. And you, you invested a little bit of time with us on the front end. That's why the rest of it was easy. Because by figuring out what that task is, that's the hardest part of all of it. Getting the systems and processes in place, that's the hard part. Finding you a rock star, that's what our platform does, right? That's that's the easy part. Exactly. Yeah, you, know, you said something a moment ago that triggered me to say this. You talk about leveraging time. So I had an aha moment a few years ago. And I mean, it's really pretty simple, but I just didn't think about it in this framework until a few years ago. And that is, you know, when I'm doing a task, doesn't no matter what it is, but when I'm personally doing a task, and let's say whatever that task is, let's say I can pay somebody else $10 per hour to do that kind of activity. Well, here's the aha moment I had, Rob, and that is when I'm doing that task myself, I am earning $10 per hour. In other words, that's the value of that time is $10 per hour. And if I'm doing it, that's all I'm making is 10 hours saving, if you will, $10 an hour. And, you know, if, you know, particularly to the seasoned real estate investors, people that are doing some deals, I mean, take your revenue per year or your profit per year, whatever way you want to do it, and take that and divide it by 52 weeks. There's your average revenue per week. Now, divide that by the number of hours that you work per week. You know, you should, if you're doing any kind of deals, you should be finding yourself, you're making in the thousands of dollars per hour that you work on deals. So how beneficial could it be to, you know, set yourself free, you know, take the cage from around you 
and delegate. I mean, one of my favorite phrases is dictate, delegate, and disappear. Let the people do what they're best at doing, you know, and you be the visionary and you go work on the marketing or you go work on some other ways to actually generate the business. So, you know, like the virtual assistants, you know, that I'm using through Rocket Station, like I have my virtual assistants. I mean, they're making outbound calls to sellers. And one beautiful thing about using your virtual assistants, you know, in my business is I don't have to worry anymore like I did for years. I've been doing this business now for 16 years. I don't have to worry anymore about a lead falling through the crack, all right? I've got a full-time acquisitionist. Well, my acquisitionist job is to be on the phone and negotiate with these sellers. But my acquisitionist doesn't have time to keep following up and following up and following up with all these leads that stack up in a very, very short period of time. And as we've discovered, the majority of the deals that we buy, we don't buy them on the first call or the second call or the third call. I mean, we buy houses from people sometimes a year down the road. You know, motivation, life and circumstances change. So now one of your virtual assistants that works with my team, they, through using the CRM, you know, having all the contacts online, well, she calls them every 30 days until we either buy that house or they tell us to stop calling them, you know? So that's just, I can't put a value on that peace of mind that I have on, you know, whether, and buyers I have, you know, she follows up with potential buyers that we have on our rent to own program. So, I mean, that is cheap, cheap, cheap insurance, if you will, that I pay, uh, you know, one of your virtual assistants to make sure I'm not losing any deals. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of us are proud of our businesses and we should be because we work so hard at it, but it also makes us a little bit blind, right? So the lead management process, it's easy to think we're doing a good job with the leads because we work them really hard and we're, we we try really hard with them with that first touch and when they come in and trying to get it from that first lead, figuring out if it's a deal or not, we work so hard at that. But that's really all we do is we're scraping the cream off the top and we don't really nurture very deep. And having your VA, what it's allowing you to do, do is go much deeper in the process. And you called it insurance. That's I haven't really heard it phrased that way, but man, that's one of the coolest ways I've, I've ever heard anybody say it because I couldn't say it better myself. It's your team members should be your acquisition person. They should be focused on closing deals they should be negotiating they should be working contracts not yeah. getting people on the phone not figuring out who's really where you know where should i be spending no they just closing deals and generating revenue yeah and you know my virtual assistant that does this from rocket station i like i view her as like she resurrects the dead is what she does so we've got these dead prospects i mean here's one thing when i first hired her on to start helping me with these tasks I had my acquisitionist send her like over a hundred seller leads. I forget how many it was that my acquisitionist had not had time to follow up with. Well, that's what she did first is, I mean, she just resurrected the dead prospects out of that pile. And we bought houses right out the gate from just those follow up activities. It's just, it's just, you know, I don't, I have nothing to say better than that. You, you're saying it perfect. I had, you know, we had talked and we just saw each other again, not that long ago. And you said you were having great success, but I didn't know to this extent. That's, that's amazing. So really, really cool to hear that. That's what it's all about, right? Is, is more opportunity with what you already have. Most people yeah. think they you need know, more leads. They don't need more leads. They just need to capitalize on what they currently have. Oh, exactly. Exactly. And you know, the way that your team has got your virtual assistants to report is just amazing. I mean, first thing in the morning, I get a, a start of the day report from the virtual assistant. And the start of the day report, uh, they say, okay, here's what I'm planning for the day. I'm going to do this. 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 Then my acquisitionist and I, we get an end of the day report. So from this time to this time, here's what I did. From this time to this time, this is what I did. 
and you know the accountability that your company has got in place of making sure that the virtual assistants are doing what they say they're doing that's phenomenal and i and i tell you uh, to be totally transparent rob i was a little skeptical and nervous before i decided to give it a try because i was a little skeptical and nervous about having a foreign accent and how strong that foreign accent was going to be when they're making outbound calls and talking to my prospects. And what I've discovered is it hasn't been an issue at all. I mean, actually the accent is like not detectable much at all. I mean, it's not like talking to somebody that, I mean, we've all talked to people overseas that work for the phone companies and the utility companies, and you like barely understand those people. But I've, I'm all, in fact, all three of those virtual assistants that I interviewed beautiful voices. I mean, a command of the English language. And I mean, here's my bottom line. I don't care what they sound like if I'm buying houses, right? I mean, who cares? Who cares what they sound like? The bottom line is I'm making more money. (laughs) Isn't that the idea? You know, so if anybody's skeptical on the accent, just get over that because they'll put money in your pocket. So so, you know, we got we got people here tuning in, Rob, that are still looking to do their first deal. At what point in time along someone's real estate investing experience and career, does it make sense for them to really start taking a look at getting a VA on board? I have my answer. I'll let you go first. I My opinion is the moment you're ready to value your time and the way that you expressed is the moment that you should bring somebody on board because there's so much to do in the day-to-day. You look at the number of hours of work to get any one transaction done. I mean, it's just about how, you know, you gave the formula, you gave the equation for, for time utilization. What do you value your time and what is worth your time to you? That's a decision for each and every person to make. But I, I think as soon as you're ready to to value your time and get some of your time back or do more deals, it's it's time to hire somebody. Well, I, I can speak from personal experience. I did this business for years without a virtual assistant. When I started using virtual assistants and, and I saw what was happening, I thought to myself, if I had known when I started out what I now know, I would have started day one with a virtual assistant. And here's, here's why. When I started out, I ran my business from the seat of my pants, all right? So it was like everything was so reactionary, all right? And instead of really building the road, what's beautiful about having your virtual assistants in our world is that, as you said, the systems are in place. We don't have to like create what does somebody need to do. I mean, you know, whether somebody's a wholesaler, a fix and flipper, buy and hold rentals, it doesn't matter. You've already got the systems in place. And as I said at the start of the show, you all, your team brought me ideas on how to utilize the virtual assistant to even, you know, exponentially create even more value than, than I could even, you know, ways that I hadn't even thought about using the virtual assistant. So anyway, oh my lands, Rob, I can't believe it. We're out of time. My word, where in the world did it go? So I know I've got my audience wants to connect with you, your team. They want to continue the conversation. They want to explore the possibility of, you know, how this can actually be a huge profit center by bringing someone on. So I don't know if you've got a gift you want to give away. I don't know if you've got uh, contact information. So how can people connect with you and Rocket Station? Yeah, so for those that are just casually interested, go to rocketstation.com. There's some great information there and there's some good resources. There's some stuff there. But for anybody who's actually serious in the idea, I mean, not in necessarily hiring from us, just serious about the ideas of leveraging and potentially using virtual assistants, I will give you Greg's email, Brooks, B-R-O-O-K-S at rocketstation.com. And that I, if there's any, any resource or value that I could add, I don't think there's anything more valuable than spending 15, 20 minutes 
with our team of experts like you talked about jay and just kind of wrapping your mind around the the potential that virtual assistants or outsourcing could provide to your business and our team would be happy to spend a few minutes with anybody that was serious about the concept and idea and, and going to value that time, we'd be happy to spend a few minutes with you. So it's Greg Brooks. He leads the team of, of development experts. And so it's Brooks, B-R-O-O-K-S at rocketstation.com. So let's just one more time, let's uh, give out that email address, Rob. It's Brooks, B-R-O-O-K-S at rocketstation.com. So Greg is, is the man and Greg Brooks, B-R-O-O-K-S at rocketstation.com. That's awesome. Rob, I tell you, it was fantastic ha having you on here. I always love hanging out with you when we're at our mastermind meetings. But uh, thank you so much for sharing this awesome information. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, Jay. And with that, folks, there you have it. Another brilliant, outstanding episode of Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. Another big thanks to Rob for being on. So until the next show, I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. We'll see you on the next show.